very briefly, very, very briefly, um, where am I coming from? This is going to frame what I'm going to say. I'm an engineer. I'm a aerospace engineer. This is the last project I did when I was there before going to, to the fun world of web, which in many ways is, is much funnier. And that <coughs> framed the way I see worlds and the way I approach problems here. I'm a here as well. Um, just, just to see, that's a funny, lovely thing. These are some of the, of the people I work with. Uh, on load is the company I have at the moment. Um, Asociación Española de Drupal. I founded that a few years ago when I was very, very into, into the community over there. Um, the, the talk is going to have mainly two, two sections. Uh, what I call some advice and some tools. Advice will go generally about uh, small organizations, teams, my opinions, and things like that. And tools, tools that I, I have used, I'm using, or some that I've seen that are, look very interesting and I'm looking into them to, to use. Um, first, disclaimer. I do not endorse any of the names that I'm going to put here. Um, there are open source products, there are pay for products. They are just simply convenient for, for if you are a small team or you are an individual. I don't endorse any of them or any of the brands that I um, showed at the beginning. And it's an opinionated talk. I will try not to swear, <laughs> but sometimes I get carried away. So um, stay with me. Uh, no kids here, no? In, 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 in Bristol last year, uh, uh, some, some of it's not here. Uh, what well, one guy took his his kid to one of the talks. I wasn't talking that, but it was like, whoa, careful. <laughs> um, this frames uh, something that I learned in engineering. I've seen here repeat, 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 and I have very clear. We make things as badly as possible, as bad as we can do it, but not worse to the point that they will not work. And I think uh, you can see that in every machine that we have built and probably in most of the projects, at least the successful ones, that are there. So, let's start with the advice. Uh, all the advice that I'm going to say here is my personal experience, may not agree with you in any way, but just in case, I recommend you to wear sunscreen, uh, as, you know, it's been proven by science that it will be, at least you have a bit of good advice in this. Uh, first, um, we are all in the business of selling. Um, the sooner we realize that, the better. That's the only business in the world. That's the only thing to do, sell. The, the sooner we realize, the better, as I said. And I'm going to try to expose some ways of streamlining that and make the most of that. We are not in the business of developing. That is something that we do on the side to sell. Okay? Um, so let's try not to uh, waste too much time um, in that one. An important thing that I've realized after working for big companies, for small companies, is uh, do not sell your time. Um, sell the product of your work, know your time. And, and I think that being a small uh, group probably will be your own group, maybe you are a freelancer, you can do that. It's again, go back to selling. You have to negotiate how you are going to sell that. But my, my own experience is do not do body shopping do not sell yourself to sit down in the client premises and be there for any thing that comes your way. I think it's a waste of, of your time. Um, we can talk about that, but, you know, as I say, no time. Well, it's more is good. I work in big teams, I manage large teams, and now I have a small team, and I think it's the best thing to do. It's right, you can focus the team, you can, you can do things much more uh, fluent than, than big ones. I've scaled back or down and I'm very, very, very happy with, with that. I, I recommend to keep it that. Uh, I moved to London to go into big projects. I, I've done big museums and big projects in gambling and things like that. Uh, there is no much difference with the small projects because big projects will see have constraints that will prevent you from doing uh, some things. Um, 
well, this is, this is uh, you know, I'm going to put some quotes here and there. Uh, it, this is this is what what I what I felt. Oh my God! Yeah, I'm going to to be part of a big company with a big project with a wow wow wow. Is that the stronger? Is that better technically in any way? No, no, it's quicker, easier, and it's more seductive. But it's not better. Uh, you don't have the control that you have with your little team in your projects. And um, and to me, that's important. That that is is is, is very important uh, to have that control and have that direction on my life. Well, um, one of the reasons is um, in big companies, uh, I've, I've experienced again and again and again the broken telephone effect. There is a massive change between what the company, whoever represents the company wants, and what we are doing. Loads of teams, everybody talking in different directions, uh, everybody with their own agenda, with their own interests, and, and in, in, in some of the projects I had the feeling that nobody cares about the project. Everybody cares about their agenda and not being uh, fired or, or whatever, or, or, or pass the blame to, to one of the other teams. And with the small teams, no, that, that, that shouldn't happen. I mean, the, the four or five of you are all in the same, in the same uh, group and you should, you should be very focused and clear. Um, yeah. Uh, this is what happened uh, basically uh, when our big companies when the deadlines approach mm, you are mm, uh, running uh, out of budget but everybody starts being afraid of losing their jobs and what it leads to, to uh, an inordinate amount of suffering just you know recommending you to to avoid that if you can um, another thing that we have is our industry is cheap coding is cheap and um, we realize or not, I have the conclusion that, uh, especially if we are uh, doing bo bo well, body shopping, I don't know if it's an English term, we, I use it in Spain, uh, you are basically uh, transforming yourself in a, in a modern slave. You are just selling your time for everything. And, you know, think about that. It's, 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 not, it's, it's not a good idea that, that paying you every day to sit down in an office is is something that was invented, I don't know, 18th, 17th century, probably, when they started paying people. Uh, and I don't think it matches uh, 21st century, and certainly it doesn't match what we do. Uh, I'm very bothered about having to do a project, sitting in an office, and then resolving all sorts of collateral problems, you know? But, um, yeah, um, we have agile, anyway. Well whatever works. I had all sorts of expressions, uh, uh, um, experiences with Agile. I had loads of opinions about Agile, um, but we cannot enter into that. Um, this is something that I've seen in many, many big, big, big projects. Oh, we have a big project. We have 12 developers, three designers, mm, 10 managers. I've seen that. Don't know why. Uh, things, things big, or 20 developers I've, I've worked with. And w when you arrive, uh, normally uh, uh, I have the good or the bad luck of being called to resolve Drupal problems. I've been in here for a long time. And when you arrive, everyone has started at the same time. The, the project definition, the specs, the architecture, the developers, and, and it's, it's, it's crazy. I see it all the time. And people that do this justify that to me. Well, this is Agile. So this is one of my comments about Agile. Well, first solve the problem, then write a code or do the rest of the things. And that's something I see very, very, very little. Again, being a small uh, team, probably working with a small uh, client, doing that is much, much easier. Um, yeah. But, you know, even, you know, being the chip industry and so on, at the end, web projects cost more and take longer than building a house. Well, the average time to build a, a, a single family house is like six months in the United States. I guess here is uh, approximately the same. Um, and it's probably cheaper than building a, a website for a, I don't know, public institution. Um, this is, I have some um, theories about why those things are. One is uh, the bicycle shed effect. All of you have heard about that. 
nothing to no okay um, it's basically um, an, an effect that happens uh, in, in management if you want when you are um, discussing a, a project it was represented with the, with the construction of a, of a nuclear power station the, um, the discussions around the technical bits about how to build the nuclear reactor are very technical very complicated and they were resolved in like five minutes in a meeting yeah 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 okay do that engineers take care of and then uh, it has to be discussed uh, to build a bicycle shed in the entrance of the station for the people to leave the bicycles. Everyone has an opinion about that. Everyone knows about colors, about how to build sheds. It's a, it's a problem that is perceived very easy. So everyone has an opinion and that goes for ages. Nobody agrees and so on. This is our business. We've been We've been. Someone has been selling since 1992. Hey, anyone can do this. This is easy. This is super easy. And all the tools that we developed, frameworks, blah, blah, is like easier than before. Easier, less effort. And, and everyone involved in, in projects and this is reading uh, how everyone writes in blogs. Whoa, this is easy. This is super easy. Oh, you should do this and you should do that. So everyone has an opinion. It makes uh, our work, I think, difficult. And, uh, and in big companies, it, it makes it, uh, uh, it, it creates a, a real trouble. Um, another thing is the Pareto principle. Everyone has heard about that? 80-20? Yeah, everyone. Perfect. So, yeah, also. Um, I am very much into that. When I get to a project, uh, I challenge specs and requirements to death, to the point that mm, I, I become... A, 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 uh, yeah, to death because um, I don't like the Christmas um, uh, list that normally uh, uh, clients prepare for projects. It's, it's a blank sheet of paper. They want absolutely everything. They really don't know what they want. They want everything. So I try to, to distill that to that 20% of what you want will do 80% of what you really need. And uh, well, the example is uh, Google Docs. And Microsoft Word. Who here is using Microsoft Word? Ah, that's a tricky question. Oh, Windows. <laughs> and, uh, and Apple. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, I moved to Open Office, LibreOffice, and then I moved to Google Docs, and I didn't look back. I mean, I don't need any of the things that uh, extra offer that is not in there. So that, that affects as well. And another one is Metcalfe's Law. Everyone has heard about this as well? No? This is basically uh, the complexity of the interactions in a network increase exponentially with the size of the network. <laughs> uh, the bigger the teams, the more relationships. The more teams involved in something, the more relationships are. Things get complicated very, very quickly, especially when you are in a company, telephone broken effect, many teams interacting, you go into Agile, Agile is a lot of communications and suddenly the company finds out that they have meetings all the time between everyone, if you want to keep things coordinated. So all of this, and last but not least, plain bad planning. Um, I think humans have very, very bad plans. Um, um, are there managers here? Okay, I, I have my company, I'm, I'm managing people, but you know, I, I normally uh, uh, blame, uh, you know, like, like the Pareto effect. 80% uh, of the problems have the source in 20% of the, of the team, and that 20% is the management team. <laughs> <laughs> I say this opinionated, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, again, um, planning is very important. Forget about plans, you know, but uh, put the time into planning. Put the time into planning before throwing yourself into code. Uh, also because, you know, as soon as you get the, you know, get going, your plan won't survive. But, as, I, uh, as, as I'm going to say later, uh, uh, some, you know, a, a, a bad plan now is better than a perfect plan uh, next week. So. Oh, I have another one. Yeah, if the plan doesn't work, change the plan, but never the goal or the uh, requirement.
clients. Okay, um, about things that I use every day. I use checklists. The aerospace industry is built around checklists. You believe it or not, the airplanes are built with checklists, list of things, tick, 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 done. All technology, very reliable. The pilot co co cockpit uh, procedures for emergency operations, they are checklists. Is reliable, works, use it for absolutely everything. Very simple, everybody understands it, easy to implement. Um, I use Gantt charts and I think, oh, 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 this is agile, oh, you don't do this. Uh, this comes from engineering, but, but we need to control the work allocated to tasks and the dependencies between them. You, we have to give the developers a, 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 a view of that because this is uh, uh, how, how I do that, just uh, post this. Tasks, days with the developers, I can, I can allocate them uh, very broadly, uh, but gives everyone the idea of the time they really want, they really have to, de to, to develop something because the Parkinson's law that basically says that work uh, tends to fill the time we have to allocate it. So if we have a sprint, everything is perceived to be done in that sprint when it's not true. We have to perform the things and, and I haven't seen any other tool that does the work better than this. You have project management tools that will do that automatically, but if you have a window and post-its, you're done. So, things that I think we need as a small ones. Well, you need testing. You need automated testing. You do that. that. That's something that we cannot live without. And that is the first thing that we throw out of the window. And I'll, I'll talk about later why I think that happens. But remember, you need this. Um, also remember that after working in, in aerospace and here, the only valid uh, reference to, to determine if something uh, is good is if it's maintainable and if it's reliable. The number of features and now, no, nothing to do about that. Because when it's being used, uh, this is what is going to determine that that product will succeed or not. We can build a million features. I had a client that had, I don't know, ridiculous number of features. The, 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 the payment process was insane because they wanted to incorporate in everything. Uh, the management on the content was crazy. When they start using that, they start calling you, oh, oh, by the way, just remove this. Oh, no, no, we don't want permission. Workflow. What? Did we say workflow? Woo, woo, woo. So, you know, challenge uh, your client uh, and, and, and to make sure that you build something maintainable and something reliable. Reliable is simple. Um, yeah. Central area of reliability is complexity and simplicity is a prerequisite for reliability. Two, things, two ways of saying the same thing. Uh, yeah, I have to show this. Oh, this is the uh, motorbike of my father. Uh, now I have it in Spain. It's 45 years old. It's very simple. It's absolutely re reliable. Hasn't ever broken. Uh, you know, we don't do things like that anymore. And I think uh, what we experience in the rest of the industry, we are suffering from that ourselves. We, we want to add lights and, and, and things. Just, just remember that. At the end, uh, a happy client uh, is going to be happy along the time they use the product. Not when you give them the keys and they see all the lights, but when they are alone at night trying to figure out how to do things. And if the product doesn't break, you know, okay, they, they may not call you to fix it, but personally, I'm not in that business. I'm in the business of resolving a problem. I like to get into a client, whoa, whoa, whoa. what is your problem? I'll resolve that for you. What I don't want is you depending on me and calling me at night and just so, no, no way. That, that's for others. There are other companies to do that. And, yeah. But I do my projects right, so those companies won't have to do much of that. But that's a personal philosophy, not uh, everyone agrees with this. Um, an interesting thing, just a uh, just, just, just fact. How can we uh, quickly estimate uh, the cost of unit testing? Just to have a, a, a quick uh, practical thing. Well, we can calculate the end path complexity. That is, 
the number of unique parts in a routine, uh, and is the minimum, basically represents the minimum number of tests required to completely test a routine. We have tools, I'm going to talk about them later, to do this for you. Easy. Common line, bam, numbers. Example of Drupal 7. Entity load, and path 2, wow. In theory, we need two tests to prove that. All of this is from IRC Maxwell. He has a complete presentation. Development by the numbers is worth watching or, or reading. Anyway, it goes about this in far more detail. Drupal HTTP request. This is, this is insane. It's absolutely crazy the way it's done, you know? So this is a, a simple way or a, 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 a very simple tool that we can have to, to help us in our design, to, to review the things as we are uh, being done and to prevent, oh yeah, I add a new method here or a new loop or what, think carefully about that. And you don't need continuous integration. If you are small, you can do that. Very simple. Continuous integration is a script that blah, 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 blah. That will simplify your setup. You can have it. I'm going to talk about the tool to do that. But, uh, you know, we have Travis, we have all of these things. They are fairly easy to implement. But if you are very bothered about that, for as long as you do the tests and you run the tests when you send the code, you can do that manually. Um, testing is slow. Um, everybody criticizes, oh, simple testing in Drupal 7 is so slow, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's slow. Oh, we should use testing framework, blah, 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 JavaScript, Node, blah, whatever, because it's super fast. Yes, it's super fast when you are testing one thing. <coughs> but when you have a content, a, 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 um, a site with loads of pages and loads of things interacting, the tests become large and everything is slow. That's what I found. I haven't found a tool that after months of development and, and automated tests, it just tests like this. Nothing. Like it will take an hour to test or two hours or whatever. So, you know, your continuous integration is going to be slow. Um, you don't need cloud. Local is good. We'll see some tools to do things locally. Uh, I don't know why I put this here, but, you know, uh, Good and now is better than perfect and tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. Oh, yeah, this, this was uh, because of the, of, of the testing. Um, I, I would rather start having uh, imperfect tests with an old tool, Selenium or whatever, now rather than wait for the best perfect test mm, architect that brings into my team and build the thing correctly and then I finish the project and I don't have tests and I've been there. Um, and this is true for I say in code, in testing and, and in love. Uh, yeah. When you are in a small team, hire professionals. Um, well, or people with some experience, or if not, just you know, bring them under your arm and help them to 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 grow with you. Um, this goes also for the need of make sure that there are some things that you have. You have a lawyer, uh, or you have the telephone of a lawyer. You, you, may, you may need that. Or an accountant to, to, to remove things that you shouldn't put your, your time on, you know? And this is um, something that I think you need. This is how I approach the projects and why some people uh, try to kill me many times. Um, I like to turn the building process around. I arrive to a place and people have hired uh, um, wonderful designers that have many prices that design something with the marketing department and the CEO and blah 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 and then you know bring it to us yeah you can do that in agile and thing but you know, my experience design agile with a, this external design team and so on is difficult um, we did something brilliant in South Bank Center with internal team but that's uh, for another story um, so instead of building something and then uh, build it with a tool, I can do that. Oh, yeah, okay, we'll do that with Symfony or with Code Igniter or with PHP, whatever you want. But normally we are here building it with Drupal. We have restrictions, we have limitations, and we chose it because it gives us some things and it doesn't give us others. So my approach is doing it the other way around. Oh, you want a tool, give me your, your um, 
the specs, your requirements, your user journeys, whatever. I do that with Drupal in no time. We test it, we validate it. If it works, designers, you have to to make this beautiful if you want and, and yeah, polish the UX and blah blah blah. But this will save weeks of work. It's difficult. Nobody wants to do that. Okay? Nobody wants to. Uh, everybody wants to see something beautiful uh, early. So I'm not the only one. I'm, I've been doing this since I was in Spain in 2009. But uh, there is an article of page two that talks about that, and there is uh, an article of Pronovix that talks about the same. So I may not that be. I may not be that crazy, you know. And one thing important: we are small. Just make sure that we understand the basics. Some, some, some very, very few basics that will help us to, to, to build on top. Don't bother about knowing every single buzzword and, 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 and re-framework of re-framework of, 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 you know, uh, because if you need the basics, you will be able to solve and put things together without relying on them. Very, very basic. HTTP protocol, just uh, uh, get... Uh, to understand it, especially HTTP2, still I see many projects working with HTTP1. Well, you can. There are plenty of implementations that will solve lots of your problems. One problem that I see is that there is a problem in planning, there is a problem in design, there is a problem in infrastructure or systems, and I don't know why, always, the design, the development team ends up fixing those problems, developing them, and this is this is very common. So uh, understand what's caching. Uh, uh, you can you can figure out many ways of cache things pretty decently, uh, and Drupal has, has very good good tools for that. Um, technical depth, understand technical debt. Um, it's, it's not do, do something wrong knowingly and then, well, let's see, take the risk. No, 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 not really, not really. We shouldn't do anything wrong knowingly. We should do everything as best as we can. The technical debt should come from a partial understanding of the problem. That at some point in the, in the life of a project, that, that could happen. So we develop something with not complete understanding, but we develop it as well as we can. So, I have a, another talk about technical debt. So, sell, 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 sell. First of all, you have to find your unfair advantage. All of you have something that is natural to you and do better than others. Find it, find it and use it. Um, you know? Yeah, I, I, as I, what's the time? What time do we have to finish? Every client thinks that he is a unique unicorn. Every single client thinks that they are unique and they are wonderful. No one is. No one is. Everyone is the same than others. Remember about that. Okay? Build your proposal and sell it. Sell it and sell it. That's what companies do. Uh, no other company except development companies uh, reinvent everything every time they have to sell it. They build something reasonable, they build something that they know very well, okay, and imperfect, yeah, fine. But they sell it again and again and then convince the client and they meet the common points with the client. Do that. Do that. Don't fall in the trap of rebuilding something new for every client. That's very expensive. That, that, that will make or, or your uh, profits very mm. and So no one is. Uh, yeah, minus expectations with the client. Time to market beats features hand down. Make the client uh, understand this. Uh, yeah, this is what I say. Build a product and blah, 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 blah. You have to learn, you have to know your product. And this is very important. Lie, lie uh, about your professional standards. Lie to your client. Yes, don't say, oh, so much time uh, developing. Well, that, that's also a trick. Oh, you have to tell me how in detail, how much time you are using, you're dedicating in each one of your tasks. Ooh, that's a trick. But, you know, oh, I do all of this, and why are you taking so much time? Well, because I have to do the architecture, I have to do the, the 
the coding or whatever, and then I have to do a testing. Uh, what, what, what sort of testing? Well, you know, we have to test. Well, 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 why? Why? And then, well, um, you, you have to test because you don't do things right and blah, blah, blah. When we start in that conversation, client always wins. Project managers always win. You must know that. No? <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's very easy to corner the developers because of that. We try to be good guys. We try to, to, to please, if you want. And, and it's very difficult to tell someone, no, I cannot do that. That cannot be done. Because we know, well, you know, Oh, this free world, no limits, a physical world, blah, blah, blah. Nah. Lie about that because then they will decide what you have to do, test that you don't have to do. And this is what happened in other industries when that uh, occurs. Uh, this is the Taiwan earthquake. One building collapsed entirely, killing hundreds of people. And they saw that inside of the concrete, there were tins to reinforce the concrete. Did an engineer agree to this? Probably not, you know. Project, budget, restrictions or something like that. And this is what happened when we don't test. So tools, quickly. Know your tools well. Don't change tools every year. Don't use the latest fancy thing, you know. You use Apache or Nginx, whatever, but know it well. Um, Envision, well, this was to, to sell a funny story about uh, this, but we don't have time, so. Uh, so miscellaneous tools, I will go fast. Uh, Ansible, Ansible, everyone knows Ansible? Yes, use it. This is, all the URLs are here, okay? Quality uh, analysis PHP tools is a site that gets all of them. Here you will, you will get uh, lovely, well, uh, task runner. Task Runner, this is my Task Runner of, of uh, choice. This is a PHP Task Runner. You can do your continuous integration with this, for example, your deployment, anything that you want. Choose uh, something that will help you. Um, in general, a good source of PHP code uh, independent libraries, the League of Extraordinary Packages. 10 minutes. Uh, I use PHP Storm because it solves a problem you have to pay for. Bitbucket. Bitbucket, you can have private projects for free. Dropbox, or if you develop it locally uh, and you put your things in Dropbox, you have backup for free also. Drupal development tools. Uh, Drush commands, everybody knows about this website. Very easy and convenient. Uh, well, of course, use make, make, make. If you do Drupal development, you do make, you do profiles. That's, that's how you do the products I mentioned before. Um, Drupal VM, nice to have virtual machines uh, in local, like magic. It works pretty well, has loads of staff part in. Have a look at that. Deploy your Tron. This is getting stale as apparently no one is developing there, but it was a way of, uh, a philosophy of deploying uh, Drupal sites. It's worth looking into that. Profile builders, as I say, build your profiles, build your tool and reuse it, reuse it, reuse it. Master. Master uh, is a, a very good thing that that gentleman over there uh, introduced me to, to, to allow you to have different um, um, environments configuration in your project so you can shift the code and switch things. I use paragraphs abundantly at these days. Yeah. Debugging tools. Xdebug. Xdebug. Use Xdebug. I've used Xdebug. Use an IDE to, to have this inside. PHP debug is into core now. Have a look at that. Uh, you have 5 PHP, you have Black Fire, performance testing is new online service, interesting pay. <laughs> Paperwork tools, uh, contract, anyone know about the contract killer? Check this URL, a contract written for humans, by humans, and developers. It's, uh, I do all my contract now like that, and the clients find it very funny, but have a look here, just in case. Uh, testing tools, uh, <coughs> Millennium, interesting project, doing um, testing, oh, this is, this, is, this is what I mentioned, PHP continuous integration. It's an online service and you can, it's open source, you can uh, host it and, and use it uh, yourselves. Some performance, um, um, load testing. We have Apache Benchmark, make sure that you have weight HTTPD, is from the light HTTP uh, um, um, server. Very nice. Uh, you have worker. 
done from the guise of uh, engineers, I think. Anyway, some design tools, the style tiles. Um, pen I use Pencil Project to do um, um, UX and prototypes, and I do lucid charts to do my <laughs> diagrams online, pay for. Interesting resource about UX myths to have conversations with your design guys. Um, well, here we are. Question, which Drupal shall we use? Well, this is how I see uh, the different Drupals these days. Where Drupal 6, where? What type of things that I did with Drupal 6? I, I started before, but types of things I've done with Drupal 7, I've reached enterprise. And the type of things that I think uh, are, are the type of people that will, will cater Drupal 8. So, um, I wanted this because, you know, if, 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 if we print the code of, of Drupal 6, 72 lines per code, we have a 700 pages book. Imagine. Drupal 6. If we print Drupal 7, we have three books. Imagine these are 700 pages books. And you know where I'm going. <laughs> if we print Drupal 8, I expected the bigger books were going to be the bigger, but this will do. We have this. Do you include all the vendors? No. Uh, we'll talk later about how I did this, but um, interesting thing is that there is something in between. Uh, Drupal 7 will not be supported. That thing is backdrop. Okay, it's slightly bigger than Drupal 7, fairly easy to work with. Maybe, maybe for small and medium projects, it will be an interesting option. Don't know, this is the same graph than above in lines of code. This is the numbers I, I used to see that. One volume, three volumes, four volumes, 24 volumes, a million lines of code. Um, I'm just saying, eh? uh, I'm, I'm into Drupal 8 as well, but uh, choose the right tool for the size of the project that you are in. Uh, well, tools for server monitoring, Sensu, Monit, Logs aggregators, log stash, you have to install it yourself, blah, 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 boo, boo, boo. Paper trail is very easy, not great, but very easy. This looks very interesting, but uh, the easier I found out to set up, you have to pay for, uh, eventually it's lovely. You can send your logs to there and you have a web interface to, to manage everything. It, it really, really helps. And for searching, my last thing, Elastic. Don't do anything with anything different. That's my advice. Elastic probably is the piece of technology that uh, surprised me more of everything I've, I've ever seen. It, it, it really works well and it's, it's really, really powerful and really, really simple. Again, if you want to do super things, things are complicated, but, uh, but that's it. Um, wow, yeah, finish. <laughs> we have four minutes for questions. questions? Sorry? Elastic. Elastic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you have um, search API, but uh, I, I don't link it because I, I work. I have my, my elastic ones. I push my things as JSON, and then I do everything with with elastic independently. But I work with uh, uh, the Fade project. Uh, it, it uses Solar for the search and to do loads of things, and it was hell. I, I, I had to rely on, on solar guys and it was impossible to understand and after it was done I don't think they even themselves understand. <laughs> Later 
I came across with Elastic, and man, I cannot get tired of installing it. So, yeah. You mentioned you have a team. Do you pay your staff for their time or for the work they do? <laughs> um, I have a team of contractors. We are a team of peers. It's a it's a different uh, uh, organization. Um, I I make sure that we get enough projects to keep going because I want them to keep working with me uh, and I pay them more so I don't have to deal with the social payments or whatever they are being paid more and uh, and, and I contract them uh, is, 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 uh, we go for close projects if you want I sell a client a close project with, with a margin and that's what we do. What I want is, uh, one of the things I like from Agile is commitment. One of the things I like from Agile is the team is committed. We are going to do this, we are going to do this. We estimate it wrongly, we put our, our tears and our blood on that, but we deliver that because we promise that. And that is the first thing that everyone I've met around working Agile is uh, a commitment. And, and I think it's very important, and I try to work with that. And it's like, yep, if you are a brilliant guy and you solve me uh, the problem in one week and you charge me what it was going to be one month for you, what? you, you solve the problem. That's, that's what I value. I need this resolved. How much is this? 2,000. 2,000. 2,000. You do it in one day, man, wow, brilliant, you know? But I, I, don't, I, I, I don't like to enter. It's like, oh, well, how are you going to do that? How many days are you going to work? What? No, 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 man. That's, that's, that's you. You have to deliver solution to me and deliver it with a quality and, and that's it. And I think it's a, it's a good understanding. You know, it's, it's a different approach, but, uh, yeah. In terms of long parsers, I was expecting to see some more logic and I didn't see it in there. Was that because you haven't used it or you have used it and you think it's... I haven't used it. Um, we have worked with Angular. Yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the project we didn't finish. Uh, well, no, it's, it's, it's partially finished in, in Tate. Uh, use, use Angular to consume um, Elasticsearch. So. But it is what I said, understand concepts. This is, this is a, a, a nice little trick. Understand concepts, understand caching, and understand what you want to do. As we've been using uh, uh, Elasticsearch as a cache server for our API content. It does it brilliantly. If you understand the, the, the concepts, the, the, the basics, you can figure out these solutions. You don't have to rely on, on, on any external, you know, applications or yeah more questions wow bang on time <laughs>